Give me a break. Give me a break. Da, 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 da. If you're over 25, I bet you can finish that jingle. Now, Kit Kats, just in case you're not over 25, Kit Kats were a huge hit for a long time, but in 2007, Kit Kats began to decline. And a woman by the name of Colleen Chorak was tasked to revive Kit Kats, which at the time was about $300 million product, among the many different products from Hershey's. And this is a story I wanted to tell you really quickly from the book Contagious by Jonah Berger. And this is a book on why things catch on. And it's a very, you know, popular book, a book that actually caught on. And anybody interested in sales and marketing should really check it out. But Colleen Shorak was tasked to revive Kit Kats. So the first thing she did, and this is critical, she did research. She did a lot of research and she found that people eat Kit Kats with a hot beverage and, and or on a break. Those are two things she really found out. That was critical that she did this kind of research. So she came up with a, a campaign called A Break's Best Friend. Now, the challenges of this, of what she was trying to do was that she did not have money for t really any TV, especially no national spotlights. She had to rely in 2007 on radio and banner ads and, and you know old school magazines and smaller magazines. But what she did was she came up with a campaign, A Break's Best Friend. All of a sudden, Kit Kats went from $300 million to $500 million, $200 million of an increase. And all she did was in her campaigns, she had people eating Kit Kat bars, even on the radio, just the sound of Kit Kat bars, the famous crunch snap, with the sounds of coffee. She linked Kit Kats with coffee. Now, this has three really important ingredients that made this A Break's Best Friend campaign so successful. I wanted to give those to you really quickly. There's alliteration, Kit Kat Coffee, Kit Kat and Coffee, that's alliteration, Kit Kat Coffee. Number two is linkage. She linked Kit Kats with another product, coffee. And what this did was it, it grew the habitat of Kit Kats. But another important ingredient that a lot of people didn't mention when they were researching the success of this campaign, but that Jonah Berger points out, is something he calls triggers. And his claim is that triggers, like coffee, are more powerful than like very interesting products or services such as Disneyland. So he found that people spread products and services through word of mouth about boring products 10 times more than interesting products. Because something that's interesting tends to fade away, but something like Cheerios or coffee is not very sexy usually, but we talk about it all the time. What brand are you drinking? What are you drinking right now? Coffee. It's something that we talk about with small talk on a more regular basis. So alliteration, Kit Kat coffee, linkage, coffee and Kit Kats, and a trigger, a daily trigger in this case, something people drink all the time. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about really quickly is how to think about this concept a little bit to maybe help you with your product or your service. So one, what Jonah Berger points out here is that um, there's different ways they could have done this campaign that would have satisfied some of those things like, uh, you know, Kit Kats and Candelope, that has alliteration. Or Kit Kats and breakdancing, that links the break concept, Kit Kats, breaks, breakdancing, right? That links them to, but what coffee does is it does all three of these, you know, or all, both of those, and it adds the daily trigger to it. So it's got alliteration, it's got the linkage concept, and it's got daily trigger. So every time people, you know, hear those sounds of coffee, drink coffee, it's, the t it's at the top of their mind to get a Kit Kat. And that is the challenge of marketing, is to bring to the top of the mind some product or service, yours preferably. So last thing is uh, to think about the context when you're choosing 
a trigger for your product or service. So this is very important. So for instance, Michelob tried to link holidays in the 70s with their drink. They said, uh, holidays are for Michelob. Well, guess what? During the holidays, it rose to the top. But the problem is there's not enough holidays. I mean, today there's a holiday every day. In the 70s, they didn't have that silly thing. So what they did was they changed the campaigns to weekends are for Michelob. So guess what? Every weekend, uh, sales skyrocketed. So try to think about your customer and the key here is to do the research for people who already consume or use your service. Consume your product or use your service. This is what nobody does and it's the most uh, difficult thing to do. It's challenging as to find, get into the head of your prospect, your current prospect. So for instance, I mean, just as simple, like think about the context, you know, in Arizona, there's deserts, it's simple, Florida, palm trees. I mean, if you're trying to sell a service or product to someone in Alaska and you talk and you have pictures of palm trees and things like that, it's going to be difficult to trigger in their mind regularly the idea of palm trees and your product. So research, don't just think about this, actually go and ask your clients and get into their heads. What's in their room? What's in their house? What are they, are they truckers? Are you selling to truckers? Well, truckers go to truck stops all the time. So link it to whatever it is, find a link. Find, you know, alliteration definitely helps because it resonates and make sure to find a good trigger. All right, I hope that uh, helped you out. Make sure you can message us at Real Elite, that's R-E-E-L, where we will help you tell your story in a very loud world. Have a good day.